As an author, one of your most important assets for selling more books is your email list. And I feel like a lot of people know this already because you guys have been commenting on my videos asking me, when am I going to come out with a video about how authors can be growing their email lists? So this video is going to pretty much cover the tactics and strategies I am using to grow my email list with my books, also with my brand, and then being able to use that platform to lead into more book sales. So if you are an author looking to grow your email list, you are definitely in the right place. And that's what we are going to get into on this video. We cover a lot of self-publishing stuff as you may or may not know. And if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure you hit subscribe and the notifications bell so you get notified about all future videos, which are pretty much going to be just like this one. So the first part of building your email list is to have a free offer in place. Now having the free newsletter, that has not been working for years. So there has to be more of a value grab than just saying that you're gonna get an email from you each week because everyone is sending out a weekly email at least with some people getting really close to daily, which is more what I go towards. I get really close to that daily point and that is a good level to get more engagement. But you need to have a good offer that is going to make people want to enter their email address. My rule of thumb is to make the free offer so enticing that people think they would have to pay for it. Now, it doesn't have to be this like all out thing, but it can be a free five day mini course, like my free five day podcast launch mini course, which helps people to launch a podcast in five days. There is a big promise there. You get to launch your podcast, I show you how, and all you have to do is enter an email address to get access. So with your free offer, think about what is the promise you want to give people and make that the focus of your copy. Now, it's important to not just create any offer. That free five-day podcast launch mini course, that is intentional because my book, Podcast Domination, is about podcasting and that is a great connection. I'm not going to create some five-day free mini course to make your house more clean because nothing in my brand is about that. So you want to connect the offer with your book and you can make the argument that one of my books, like The Wealthy Author, you, some people may be interested in podcasting and may want to learn how to do that type of thing, but you really want to make it as connected as possible to the actual book's topic. So if you have no offers yet, I would recommend creating your first offer around a book that is already out or that is almost done. And then you can go in and create more free offers to connect with some of your other books. So podcast domination, the thing I promoted in there for a while was my content marketing success. So I'm gonna get a free ticket, get access to all the sessions. And then in a few days, those get locked into a portal and you know use the all access pass, get lifetime access. But now with the podcast mini course in effect, I changed my book podcast domination because as a self-published author, you can edit your book at any time and have those updates reflected on Amazon in 24 or 72 hours. I love that part about self-publishing, but I made that change to the book to make the offer more connected to the actual contents of the book rather than just something a little bit more broad. And you want to put this on page one of your book, the very first page, because Amazon preview will let your potential reader see your free offer. So some people go as far as to say, get the free audio book. All you have to do is enter your name and email address. So people who were thinking, oh, maybe I should buy this person's book. They don't buy your book because they entered their name and email to get the audio book. And people may say, oh, that's less book sales, but that's $2, maybe three for an email address. And it's not out of pocket money. So pretty much what that means is if you ran a Facebook ad and you're getting two to three dollars per email address you add to your list per conversion, that is a really good rate and that is effectively what you did with your Kindle book. I don't do this strategy, I just know other authors who do it, but offering that free offer, that opt-in page to so go to your email list on page one is going to get a lot of your non-buyers to join your email list just to see what you're all about. Maybe they're not convinced about your book. Maybe they just want to learn how to launch a podcast and then they may buy the book later because just to give you a recap of how like my system works, like I, the five day podcast launch mini course is all about launching a podcast. 
podcast domination, the book goes into launch growth and monetization. This is also something that people hire me to coach them on and manage for them. So the training course is something that gives you a really in-depth analysis on one point, one key area I focus on in the book, but there are other key areas that you do not get from that training. And the way you get those other key areas is to get the book or hire me as a coach or go through one of my trainings. So the free offer connects to your book and gives people a reason to buy even after they've gone through your free training or they've gone through your free checklist or free worksheet or whatever it may be, they have a reason then to buy your book if they did it already or a reason to upgrade to a training course or your coaching if they do have your book, but they're ready to learn more from you. And having that first page opt-in is one of the secret streams of income to making more money with your books. I actually recently had Dale Roberts on my channel talk about some of his secret streams for making income. So we will have that video linked in the description. The thumbnail should appear somewhere just based on how I edit this thing. But that is a good video for you to check out later if you want to figure out how to make secret streams of income from your Kindle books. But anyways, let's go back to figuring out how we use our books to grow our email lists and how we grow our email lists outside of our books as well. So that first page method is something a lot of people use, but one hidden opportunity that not as many people are using to grow their email lists within their books is content upgrades. So every chapter or every other chapter, you can include a content upgrade that pretty much says there's more in-depth analysis on this topic. There's a free training course that goes more in depth on a certain topic. There's a worksheet that covers a lot of what we said and you go to this link to access that resource and all of the resources mentioned in the book and you have people enter their name and email address. So that is a great strategy because content upgrade gives someone a little extra and it gets them on your email list at the same time. This is a common strategy used by bloggers who they say, you know, we cover five tips now, five more tips in the content upgrade if you enter your email address. Or for people who write like 10,000 word blog posts, you want the condensed version, enter your name and email, get the content upgrade. Now, the only problem with doing this in every single chapter of your book is that readers can feel cheated. They could feel like they got your book, but there's just so much content that you just didn't cover in your book. And the way to overcome this is you can make worksheets for some of the content upgrades where you don't include the worksheets in your book, but you say the worksheets are an option. And if you feel like you're going off tangent on something, so let's say you're talking about podcasting in a podcasting book, and then you briefly touch on YouTube. The content upgrade can be, hey, if you want to learn more about YouTube, how you can use it to grow your podcast, how you can optimize your channel, grow your channel, something like that, then enter your email address. So it's one of those things that people weren't expecting as much to find in your book, but now you are presenting it as a content upgrade for people who do want to do that additional research instead of going into things like YouTube optimization, thumbnail creation, statistics, going into that stuff in a book about podcasting where it wouldn't make as much sense. So that's just one of the ways you can incorporate content upgrades without readers feeling like, this guy's just trying to get me on my email list. He could have just thrown the stuff in the book to give me as the reader more value. So you do have that dynamic mix. You don't want to make your book sales or you don't want to pretty much say you better sign up for my email list, but you can present content upgrades every once in a while as you know, this is an option for you to get additional content from me that we do not cover in the book. And it's up to you based on how much you feel like it's too much or too little. It's good to share the book with a few people who you know first to get an idea of is this too much or is this too little. But general rule of thumb, as long as you are providing a lot of value in your book and as long as the content upgrades are valuable as well and some of them, you know, like, again, like branching out a little bit like the YouTube example, then it is going to be uh, a great reading experience that also helps you to grow your email list. So now that we have covered how you can use the pages of your book to grow your email list, let's talk a little bit beyond that. Let's talk about your platform and your network and leveraging those opportunities to grow your email list. The best way to really grow your email list, not just for authors, but really for anyone, is to partner up with people and get into relationships where you share their free offer with your audience, they share your free offer 
with their audience. Getting into enough of these partnerships over time will allow you to experience that exponential growth, especially if you are partnering up with people who have similar sized audiences as you, or some cases, you know, you can have like someone who partners up with you who has like a little bit of a bigger audience, like Dale Roberts. When we did that collaboration, which I mentioned earlier, he had like almost 25,000 subscribers at the time. He's definitely past that mark now. Uh, me, I have just hit 4,000 subscribers. I had known Dale for years beforehand though, but usually you do partner up with people who have similarly sized audiences as you. And if you partner up with enough people that can really help you with growing your email list and being able to expand your book sales as well. And you could also follow the same strategy for cross promoting books. So one of the things that a lot of authors do is they will gather with a bunch of other authors and they will say, if you promote my book now, I will do an IOU and promote your book later. And if you do this with enough authors and you get enough people to promote your book during the launch day, that can help you make a lot more sales for your book, get more people to know about you. And then as we talked about using the pages of your book to grow your email list, that is going to help you to expand, not just with book sales, but also your email list. And if you do get enough authors together, you can say, let's all do a special promotion where we make all of our books free for the same time frame, or we make all of our books 99 cents for the same time frame. And then you create that as one big page with everyone's books and with the clickable links. And when people click on the links to, you know, get your book for free or get your book for 99 cents, you can say, enter your name and email address to know where to go for this promotion. Enter your name and email address to get your free copy of this book, which is normally like $2.99 or $3.99 or whatever price it normally is. And that will help you to grow your email list. And with all those other authors participating, it's also going to help you grow your email list much faster. You can have these authors create their own landing pages if they want to grow their email lists with you. You can also just have the Amazon links to the books. But I do recommend giving people that two-step process where they enter their name and email first, and then they get to see your book. They can even get redirected to the book uh, upon entering their name and email, you can have that set up on the back end. But doing that ensures that this isn't someone who is from one of the other authors who would have joined your email list, but they're not on your list because you didn't give them that option. So with one of these types of collaborations, like yes, you will be bringing people from your audience to that page, but there are going to be a lot of other authors who are bringing a lot of new people to that page to see your different books and being able to capitalize on that extra exposure will help you to grow your email list. And another way to partner up with people and remember like this key theme of partnering up with people, this is very important. It helps you build your network. But another thing you could do is get people involved in roundups. So in between doing these, you know, having authors, put all their books on one page and you create that page, you generate traffic to that page. In between doing that stuff, you could also be doing roundups. So roundups are pretty much you get 10 to 20 experts to each contribute a tip. So let's say for self-publishing, I say, and you know what, let's do this in the comments. I'll do a roundup. And if you comment with a good self-publishing tip that isn't taken already, I will actually write a blog post and do this roundup. So you can get on my blog with this. but. Pretty much what is your best self-publishing tip for selling more books? I would reach out to a bunch of people. They would share their tip. I would put all their tips in the blog post. So you have people writing the blog post for you. You can include content upgrades. You could promote your stuff like in the middle. You don't want to be like promoting at the end of every single tip, but being able to do that extra promo, being able to offer some type of content upgrade that maybe does a recap will help you to grow your email list and all of the authors who, uh, or all the people who are involved with that roundup will be bringing you more traffic, which in turn, you know, new people, new email subscribers. So I will be doing that blog post roundup if enough people leave comments. So question of the day, what is your big self-publishing tip for selling more books. Drop that in the comments. You could get featured in one of my blog posts. So the whole partnering up in relationships and building the network, part of that is based on having a network already. Part of that is reaching out to people because you have to create your own network and reach out to people uh, to have these type of opportunities come up. 
But my favorite way to really build my network and have these opportunities and have people collaborate with me to this format is through podcasting. Every person who I've collaborated with, for the most part, I've already interviewed them on my podcast or I have an interview with them coming up. And it's just such an easy way to build relationships. So if you are by any chance interested in launching your own podcast, using your podcast to sell more books, get more clients, get on more stages, those are all different things people hire me to do through my coaching. So if you want to schedule a free strategy call, see if we are a good fit, markgaberti.com slash strategy is the link, which will be in the show notes of this video. Show notes. I was literally thinking of podcasting. <laughs> and while building relationships is going to be such a big game changer for your business, using your own platform is just as important. Using whatever social networks you have, whatever blog, YouTube channel, podcast setup you already have, including those call to actions is going to be really helpful for you to grow your email list. I always have something in the description of a YouTube video. I always have something in the show notes of a podcast episode. I always do something in a blog post and all those different things to present an offer for people to join my email list. So it's great to share free content and free content, you know, strongly encouraged to keep sharing that type of stuff. But you do have to think of what offers connect with the free content that I'm sharing in a way that get more people onto my email list in a way that can introduce people into some of my paid offers, because that's what's going to allow you to leverage all the platforms you're building. So many people, they just think about, let me build up the followers, let me build up the likes, let me build up the subscribers, but where's this all going? That's where you figure out right now, what are you doing with this platform you are building? Where do you want people to go? How do you get people to go on your email list? And it's so important to get people on your email list because all it takes is one social network that you've been loving, that you've been all in on to change its algorithm and you're done because you don't have an audience on your email list, you don't have an audience you can reach out to, you are dependent on the social network. So it's great to build social media platforms and uh, grow your audiences there, but you don't wanna become dependent on them. You wanna be growing your email list because that is going to be the way you truly communicate with your audience without having to rely on an algorithm or risk if the algorithm changes and it becomes a more pay to play atmosphere as we have seen for years with Facebook pages. So you do wanna be thinking about how are all these platforms working together to grow my email list. I did recently come out with a video detailing how you can use social media to sell more of your books. A lot of those same tactics also apply for growing your email list. I will be linking to that video in the description and it should appear somewhere. But the idea of using social media with a purpose instead of just to boost up numbers and share great content is going to be really helpful for your brand. Now, one less talked about thing about getting opt-ins, about growing your email list, is the design of your landing page and what your product, your free thing actually looks like. We talk about this a lot with book covers. In fact, we're gonna be coming out with a video very soon on this channel where I talk about how you can create a book cover without spending a penny or just some of the best practices for book covers. So we're actually gonna be covering both of those in the same video. Subscribe, hit the bell if you want to get notified when that video comes out. But design really matters. And I had a book called 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter. This is by Freebie. But when I first came out with the book, the design was bad and that did not help me at all with my conversion rates. It's only when I got a new design for the book, actually someone in my audience really came through for me big time and provided me with this design. But being able to include that awesome design on my opt-in page allowed me to get more conversions and people just see you in a more professional way. It's like having a good book cover versus having a bad cover, but in opt-in page form. So you wanna make sure your design is good. You wanna look at other opt-in pages in your niche to see what they look like, not to copy them exactly, but to get ideas for what color schemes are working, what types of, if you're doing free eBooks, what eBook cover is working the best, what setup works best for doing a free mini course launch, doing A-B split testing uh, to get to that next level of getting higher conversions. There's a lot of different things you could do, but really just look at the designs of other people's pages, the best people, like the people who are running ads. Like you wanna click on every Facebook ad you see and see what their opt-in page looks like. And the bonus tip for everyone who wants to figure out more ways to grow your email list is to collect email addresses at events. 
If you are a speaker, this is just going to be a lot easier. Ask the event organizer, see if you get permission. And pretty much you just have a form that goes out to everyone asking a few questions. And pretty much one of those questions is, do you want to receive this freebie that is connected to your speaking gig and your speaking gig should be connected to your book, connect all these things as much as possible. But you do ask people, do you want this freebie? Yes or no. If you want this freebie, please enter your email address. So then at the end of your talk, you could collect all those forms. You could manually add those people to your email list. I know some speakers who get hundreds of new email subscribers just with this method alone. You could also at the end of your presentation have a call to action where people can subscribe and get a freebie that you're offering at the end of that presentation. But you don't have to be a speaker to grow your email list through being at events. You can be the attendee who talks with a lot of people, who builds relationships. Some of these people later on become part of your roundup article. Some of these people later on uh, do cross promotions with you or be on your podcast, which I can help you with. Uh, but being able to connect with all these different people at events will allow you to have that higher potential in the future to have them on your email list. So one of the big mistakes people make with events is they want to pay off right away but it's gonna be the three day event, you chat with people, you interact, you have a way of making sure you follow up with people because too many people, they like, yay, the event, so exciting. And then they go home, they do nothing. And they don't even follow up with the people who are saying like, I've got this great opportunity for you. I'd love to have you on my podcast and no follow up whatsoever. And that's just, you're wasting the opportunity of going to that event. A lot of these events, it's not about the content. It's more about the people you meet and the relationships that you do. So in addition to going to events, you can even organize your own events, which is a little more advanced. I do have a video about how I organize out of state events to build my audience even more, to get more book sales, to grow my email list. So I will have that video available. And it's just one of those good to have skills. If you know, you're going on a vacation, you know when, you know where, and you wanna meet up with some people and you organize your own event, that is a really great skill to have because it allows you to effectively pay for your vacation if you do it right. It allows you to get into collaborations in the future. There's a lot of different benefits that come with knowing how to run your own events, doing them in your own state where it's easier to, you know, do consistent events that you know, you get more and more attendees over time. And also that skill of being able to do them out of state, connecting them with other big name events to, you know, have less of a problem with getting attendees. But that video will be up somewhere here. It will be in the description as well. And that is a bonus tip for people looking to use events to grow their email lists. So those are some of my favorite ways to grow your email list, to get more book sales. One of my other favorite ways, I already talked about podcasting, I already mentioned a lot about that, but I'm mentioning it again because that's what next video is going to be about, how to use podcasting to sell more of your books. That is coming up. So in the meantime, if you aren't already subscribed, hit the notifications bell so you get notified when that one comes out. And also, if you wanna talk to me, schedule that free strategy call, see how we can work together, that link is down there below. But once again, guys, thank you so much for coming back on this video. Dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today.